Joining me now is New South Wales One Nation leader, Mark Latham. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Caleb. Thanks for having me and thanks for setting out that appalling catalogue of um, political content <laughs> in our New South Wales schools because it lets people know just how bad it is. You know, you've done your research. A lot of these matters have come to me over the years and it's quite appalling mm. that we've got teachers who think it's a classroom for political indoctrination instead of education. Well, it's quite sad, really, that I have to read all of this stuff out. Uh, and, of course, you know, you think back, it wasn't all that long ago we had uh, safe schools was being forced upon students. I mean, you know, we're teaching kids how to grow vegetables, but we're not teaching them how to learn to read and write and all of this kind of thing. And this latest example, uh, which is, of course, on the, the central coast, where children as young as seven were being put into these gender lessons and taught about gender fluidity. Now, I, I would have thought that at, at seven years old, gender fluidity is not something that comes into your mind. It's not something that, that is even on the radar at all. Why do some schools and teachers seem to want to push this stuff upon children? Well, there's a sickness in our education system, Caleb, where uh, adult teachers think that the name of the game is to push their politics, their worldview, their ideology upon little kids. And I say to those teachers, uh, stick to the basics of education. And, and just as importantly, if you really are that political in your worldview, there are plenty of elections where you can run, local, state and federal. Throw yourself uh, before the public at election time and see how many votes you get. But don't take what obviously are political frustrations out on little kids. Because at age seven, a child protection class should essentially be about stranger danger and related matters. It's not yeah. about gender diversity. It's not about gender fluidity. It's not about gender ideology. And for seven-year-olds, it's a world of boys and girls and, and the simplicity of that. So the report I've had from this Yemina Beach Public School, the feedback from the school community is that the, uh, the children that participated came out confused and complaining about it. Mm. And that's not surprising because it's certainly not school education. Well, this is the thing. It, it is introducing confusion, I think, to children. I mean, you know, at seven years old, life is pretty simple and it ought to be pretty simple at seven years old. As you get older, you have to deal with the complications of the world and you will meet, you know, many and varied people who uh, feel all sorts of different ways and experience all, all sorts of different things. I mean, that's, that's just the real world. But at seven years old, to be telling children that, you know, perhaps if they want to put on a dress or something and, and try that on, that that must be them, you know, expressing their gender fluidity. This is just the stuff that kids do, is it not? Kids have to discover themselves. And in order to do that, they do all sorts of weird stuff. I mean, kids have imaginary friends and talk to That's people right. who don't exist and all sorts of things. This is just being a kid. Yeah, well, some adults talk to people who don't exist as well. I think that's part of the problem for these teachers. But, Gail, you, you gave us the openness of your experience dressing up as Mrs Doubtfire, and, and anyone who's had children knows that uh, dressing up is a regular part of it, whether they dress up as superheroes, yeah. male or female. I, I've seen little boys running around in ballerina outfits and, and so forth. Uh, you go to friends' parties and this happens from time to time. It's all innocent. It's all innocent and part of growing up and the fun and the innocence of, uh, of the dress-ups. So it's not an indication of a gender switch at age five, six or seven, far from it. And that, um, you know, it's something of a cliche, let the kids be kids. It's so true because life as an adult obviously becomes more complex with worries and challenges. And uh, if children haven't got that innocence and fun and laughter and joy in their life, then they're losing a lot. And they're certainly losing a lot at your minor beach public school and other places in New South Wales where instead of getting instruction about the basics of education, they're having politics shoved down their throat. And it's, it's quite a disgrace and uh, as big a disgrace, the education minister and Sarah Mitchell, who is useless and has allowed this to run rampant through the system today, confronted with this form of child abuse, she said she declined to comment. How can she sleep at night, knowing this is happening in schools on her watch, it's a form of child abuse, it's not child protection at all, and an education minister, notionally from the National Party, wouldn't you think she had a concern about it? I know. We, we really just need to get back to basics. Forget all the woke nonsense. We, we need to lift our literacy and numeracy rates, which are falling through the floor, as I said before. 